So today, folks, I wanted to talk about that Supreme Court ruling that we've got that just came out today. And at the end of this, I've got a clip of a man in a restaurant. <laughs> and this is just testament to the fact that not everybody should carry guns. And you got to see this video at the end of it, folks. But today, we got to talk about the crime family, the Trump crime family, like no other. And it's a family tradition. It all started with the, the patriarch, Fred Trump. He set up this shell company, folks. He set up a shell company and put his children in charge of the shell company. And he, and he padded the expenses of things like toilet paper, boilers, and all this stuff by 20 to 50% so that he could pass the money to the kids without having to pay gift taxes. So, Judge Engeron, that's where it started. It started with Fred Trump. And folks, I just have to wonder, you know, Donald Trump, why do you lie? Why do you lie? And why did you try to rig the last freaking election? And why do you like Putin more than NATO? I mean, there's no other reason for it, folks, other than to, to say that it's just a family tradition. But I kid you not, take a look at this. So the New York Times, this is from 2018. They have this article. The AP highlighted this article from the New York Times. And it says, Trump got $413 million from his dad, much of it from tax dodges. So it all started in 1992. He set up a shell company as a purchasing agent to supply Fred Trump's buildings with boilers, cleaning supplies, and other goods like toilet paper. The father would pad invoices with markups of 20 to 50% there, thereby avoiding gift taxes. I mean, you, you, you're telling me that you had to mark up things like cleaning supplies like toilet paper? to try to pass money to your kids to avoid gift taxes. Freaking family tradition, folks. And you know, Fred Trump hired Alan Weisselberg, who was the CEO all the way into, what, just last year. And here he is, CFO Alan Weisselberg, is walking to court because he's expected to plead guilty to perjury charges in New York relating to his false testimony he gave in a civil investigation of Trump organization fraud. He lied. He lied. Freaking family tradition, folks. So Donald Trump said this. He was really happy about that ruling today from the Supreme Court that said that he had to be on the ballot in all the states. So what? Let him be on the ballot. He'll get defeated in most of those states. Just wait and see. But here's what he said, folks. He pivoted that ruling into the immunity ruling that he expects to be coming up with sometime in July. And here's what he said. And while we're on the subject, and another thing that will be coming up very soon will be immunity for a president. And not immunity for me, but for any president. If a president doesn't have full immunity, you really don't have a president because nobody that is serving in that office will have the courage to make in many cases, what would be the right decision, or it could be the wrong decision. It could be, in some cases, the wrong decision, but they have to make decisions, and they have to make them free of all terror that can be raised terror. on them when they leave office or even before they leave office. Terror. So what, what the hell is terror? But, folks, you know, we've covered this whole thing about immunity. All the way back to the Nixon administration, 1974, you've got the Senate Judiciary Committee, subpoenaed Nixon for the tapes, the special counsel subpoenaed Nixon for the tapes, and he wouldn't do a damn thing. He wouldn't turn the tapes over. Instead, he tried to edit the tapes. It sounds like something Trump would do, right? Let's edit the tape. Let's take the bad stuff out and give it to him and see if that works. No, it didn't work. It didn't work. And it wasn't until the Supreme Court ruled unanimously that they had to turn over all 64 tapes. And they were planning, as you know, to impeach Trump. And he obeyed the Supreme Court and turned over the 64 tapes and then resigned, what, a week later. So, folks, this has all been decided. And I have to tell you this, that if the Supreme Court rules that Trump does have immunity, they will have laid the first brick in the path to Donald Trump being an autocrat. Hugely serious stuff. If immunity didn't work for Nixon... It shouldn't work for Donald Trump. And you can bet your bottom dollar that Nixon made the same claim of immunity. And it, if it doesn't work for him, it should not work for Donald Trump. 
And folks, I got to show you this. Well, there's a bobblehead that's out, all made in China and stuff, and it's got a real cloth flag on it. It's Donald Trump hugging the flag. And things, I guess, are so bad. And you know he's making a little bit of a commission on it. Here's the ad audio of it. I mean, what a joke. There's the bobblehead. Show your patriotism and buy a freaking bottlehead. Bobblehead, huh? Is that how it works? And take a look at this. I found this on eBay. It's a button from the Reagan administration. And what is the slogan? Let's make America great again. So it's not a Trump thing. He didn't invent that slogan, for God's sakes. He just lifted it like everything else. Right? No credit to Reagan for that, that slogan. It's just, uh, we just picked it up and let's make America great again. Ron Reagan. He's the one that came up with that. And folks, have a look at this. So evidently, the cognitive decline of Donald Trump is just getting worse and worse because he still thinks Obama is president. He said this at a rally in Richmond just a day or so ago. And the thing that's sad about this video is not only did he say and refer to Obama as, as like the president, he didn't catch that, but he caught the fact that he didn't say the word nuclear. So he tried, he took three swings, whew, like a, like a wiffle ball, three swings, trying to say the word nuclear, totally oblivious to the fact that he thinks Obama's president. And he said the other day that he, oh, he just says that Obama's president because he does it for sarcasm. Well, the, the only people that are laughing are the ones that are laughing at you, Donald Trump. starting to throw around the nuclear word today. You've heard that, nuclear. He's starting to talk nuclear weapons today. Nuclear. 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 My God. You know, and folks, this whole thing about funding Ukraine, by not funding Ukraine, the Republicans are allying themselves with Putin by not allowing Ukraine to get the money that they need to defend themselves. I, I honestly believe this, folks. I believe, like that picture behind me of FDR, what what Biden should do is a Lend-Lease program. He should get the weapons to Ukraine because ultimately Russia is going to pay for the rebuilding of Ukraine. That $300 billion will get our money down the road. It should be like a Lend-Lease program for the weaponry, bypass Congress, lend them the weapons, they can pay it back later. FDR did it. You can do it too, Joe Biden. It's what we ought to be doing. So folks, take a look at this. Here's the video. So it's a restaurant. It's got the camera showing the register, the countertop. There's a black man that's getting his food. There's a white man behind him and his, his freaking gun goes off in his pocket and he blames it on the black guy. Not everybody should carry guns, folks. Have a look. There it goes. Boom. Twice. What? Not me. Not me. I have no clue. I have no clue. <laughs> what? I don't know. Blame it on the black guy. I guess so. Yeah. But yeah, blame it on the black guy. Not everybody should be carrying guns, despite what the NRA says, despite what, you know, what your, what your, Uncle says that's always wears camo. Not everybody should be wearing a concealed weapon, you know, folks. It's it's not made for everybody. I mean, this this is the kind of stuff that happened. I'm surprised somebody didn't get like killed or the guy didn't shoot himself in the foot, to be honest. Thanks for tuning in, folks. We'll look for you next time. Till then.